The, the key on assessment is really based around like the unit design. If we have a strong compelling question, then the assessment is about finding ways for students to demonstrate that they have gained some understanding of that compelling question. And you're right, we don't need to do it the same way every time. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in the training last year. The, I think that to me, like the most obvious way to have students show that they can answer a compelling question is an essay, but we don't want to write a bazillion essays. And their ability to write essays is very different depending on their grade level and things like that. So what are other ways that you can do that and assess it in a credible way? So one that we talked about last year was having some kind of structured class discussion. Uh, the example that we used was the Socratic Smackdown, but there are, you know, that's just one model. But the idea is that if students are verbally producing all the information, that you would want them to, to put into an essay, you can assess that as well, as long as you have some kind of rubric or structure that you're gonna to use to assess it so that there's some kind of accountability when somebody asks how it was assessed. Um, you can have students produce different kinds of work beyond just essays, so they can produce presentations, they can produce uh, projects, so there's no, as far as the Department of Education is concerned, there's no one absolutely right way to assess it. It's not about the methodology of assessment. It's more about have we set a rigorous standard and have we asked kids to engage in a variety of different sources and when they go to produce their final work, do we see the evidence of their work in their final product? And the, and the, the, the basic core of it is they are producing arguments that are well-reasoned that are based on evidence that they have gathered and supporting questions that they have produced. It is okay if it's a controversial answer. It's okay if they all produce different answers, as long as we can see they've gone through the process of acquiring knowledge, and when they present their answer, they're doing it in a sort of academic way, where it's tied back to evidence and reasoning. How you assess that is gonna vary. I mean, I think that creating a rigorous rubric for no matter what it is, whether it's an essay or whether it's a presentation or whether it's a discussion, having a really clear rubric that's shared with the students ahead of time so they know what skills are being assessed, having formative assessments along the way where you have practiced those skills so you're setting them up to be as successful as possible. Um, which, but the, rub the, the nice thing about the rubric is that it gives you something that you can turn back to when you say, why did this student earn this score? And you can say, well, we, we assessed these four categories for these four skills, and this is what the student did to demonstrate this skill, as opposed to the way that my college professor that I was a TA for in college graded things, where he would just write 92 at the top. And I'd say, why is that a 92? And he's like, well, read it. It you know, feels like a 92. Um, <laughs> You can get away with that maybe at the college level. And a lot of times when I look at student work, even before I look at the rubric, I've got a pretty good idea of where it's gonna score. But the rubric makes the grading faster. So that's kind of a quick personal answer. In terms of resources that the department would like you to think about in terms of assessing, that's in production right now.